Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics. I am super excited to bring you stocking options for a 125 gallon aquarium. This is an aquarium that gives us lots of options and I'm gonna bring you some that are quite unusual. I hope you enjoy it. At the end of the video, we're also gonna talk about some fish that a lot of people like to try to put in a 125, but may not be a great option. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for being here. So I'm going to start out by giving you some options of some fish that are really pretty, such as these discus. And by the way, if I have species profiles like I do on the discus, I will put those in the descriptions below if you want more information on some of these fish. But discus are a wonderful option for a 125 where you could keep multiples together and get amazing color just like this. It's just truly awesome. So the way I'm going to organize this video is I'm going to show you some fish that are relatively large but maybe not super aggressive that you could potentially keep in a tank with other smaller fish as long as they're not so small they're going to get eaten. So discus would certainly be one of them. Of course you have to be super selective on the types of inhabitants you keep with them but they can be pretty cool. The other option that you have for a 125 are what's known as the poor man's discus and that is the severums. Now there are different types of severums. They come in many different varieties, but they can get pretty big. The one downside to severums I think is I have never met a plant that they wouldn't eat. So every type of greenery I've ever thrown in a tank, they have eaten it from hornwort to anubias to crips to java fern, you name it, they've eaten it. But these are magnificent fish. They tend not to be overly aggressive, although again, they're cichlids, so every once in a while you're going to get some that are a little bit more aggressive than others. With any cichlid that we're talking about here, if you get them and they pair up and they start laying eggs or they have fry, they are going to get significantly more aggressive. So if you want to avoid that, it might be best in some cases just to keep one specimen to avoid pairs and then we have a problem, even in a larger tank such as this. But these are great fish. Most of the fish that you're looking at here, here's a geophagus, which is another fantastic option. Here's a severum in my tank. A lot of the fish that you're seeing here aren't actually mine. They're from the numerous fish store and fish room tours that I have done in the past. If you want to check that out, I will put playlists down in the description below. If you want to see some really awesome fish room tours, that's where a lot of these fish are coming from. Now, this happens to be one of my 125s where I actually mixed some small geophagus and some severums together. This has been a mix that has worked for us many times in the past. This was geophagus wine milleri. Unfortunately, I lost most of the fish in this tank to a disease, and this was right when it was set up, so the water's still a little bit cloudy. But the point is, we've got some really cool fish that could potentially go into 125, and geophagus and severums are one of them. This happens to be geophagus altifrons, which is in my 150, and it's a great looking fish. Here's geophagus megasema, which is very similar. It, it, it's somewhat similar to kind of like a geophagus tapajos. The geophagus that I'm talking about here typically grow a little bit larger than some of the geophagus I've mentioned in other stocking options ideas. So some of these geophagus might get eight to 10 inches long. So better off in a 125 than something smaller. Here is a 125 that we set up with some geophagus pelagrini. You can see here we have some white skirt tetras and some angelfish are also in this tank, which is another good option. But this is a really nice option for a 125 and a lot of the geophagus don't get overly aggressive which makes them a little bit easier to keep. Some of them will dig, most of them do well on sand, but these are great fish. And again, as we go through these options, we'll get into some fish that are a little bit more aggressive, but we're starting out with something I think a lot of people could potentially keep in a larger tank and not have an overwhelming amount of problems. Another really solid option in a 125 are in fact angelfish and again just like with severums and discus there are many different varieties, many different colors can look really great in a 125. The one thing I will say is we have done lots of stocking options videos. If you want even more options, check out the playlist below because any of those fish that we've done so far, anywhere from a two and a half up to a 75 gallon can also work pretty well in a 125. Here are some schooling options. So things like silver dollars might work with some of the fish that we've already mentioned. Rainbow fish are a really good option as well. If you want to add a little bit of color, add a little bit of movement, maybe something smaller than some of the fish that we we've mentioned so far. Here are the rose line sharks. Those are the ones with the, the red lines along the sides of their body. We have some of these in a 125 right now. You can see more here, but these are a great option where you can get 
a, a decent number of them, maybe a half a dozen or eight or so, and that can look really nice. Here are, again, some more rainbow fish. And the point here is that you're getting these schooling fish that give you the option to have a little bit of movement and color besides some of the larger fish that we've talked about so far. Most of these fish are big enough that they're not gonna be eaten by the fish we've mentioned so far. But keep in mind, some of the fish that we are about to mention, these might be a little bit more aggressive and they get a little bit larger and they might make snacks out of smaller fish. But I think one of my favorite for a 125 might be the Vieja cichlids. And there are different types this is Sinspilum, and in fact, I've actually got some of the offspring from these fish in my fish room right now growing out, and the first place that they're gonna go after they grow out is probably in a 125, but Vieja are absolutely amazing cichlids. Now, they can be a little bit more aggressive than some of the fish that I've mentioned so far, but you can see here they're living in a pretty decently sized group. I believe this was a 120 gallon tank on one of the fish room tours that we did, Jason's fish room. Again, if you want to see these fish in more detail, check out the fish room tours that we've done. But these fish are magnificent. You can see the color. You can see the way that they're interacting with one another. It's certainly a really good option, but again, you want to do your research. So everything we're talking about here, I'm not necessarily saying that all of these fish can go together. In fact, I'm not saying that at all. We're giving options. This is kind of step one. And then as you start to research the individual fish, you can figure out, okay, what can go with a vieja? What can go with a discus or an angel fish? But these are just options of fish that will certainly fit in a 125 and be comfortable in that environment. So we're looking at some fish that are more easily attainable, but I want to also show you this, like the Tomasicla, some fish that are a little bit more rare, but again, would look really cool in a 125. These are going to be hard fish to find. There's no doubt about it. They're not super common in the United States, but look at them. They are absolutely wonderful. The tank size that we're looking at right now, I believe in fact is a 125 and there is a group of them in this tank. Now these might be a little bit more aggressive than some of the fish that we've seen so far, but if you can find them, they are a highly rewarding fish to try. And again, something that would be a little bit on the rarer side. The other one that you could consider is Theraps irregularis. Now these fish don't get nearly as big, but they're just really cool fish. Now we happen to have ours in a 75 gallon right now. They're gonna stay smaller than some of the fish that we've talked about, but again, if you're looking for a fish with really cool colors, this certainly might be a good option. There are a little bit more aggressive geophagus. This is geophagus brasiliensis that we put in a 125. It was a group of them. This group dynamic probably wouldn't work as they got larger, but at least when they were on the smaller side somewhere, I think the largest one might have been five inches or so. They were working out okay, but certainly if you wanted to add a splash of very intense color to your tank and wanted to get a single specimen, it might be an option depending on the other inhabitants of your tank. And this is what they look like when they get a little bit bigger. This fish was probably seven or eight inches, had a lot nicer finish at one of, I think this was the OCA bull show that they had last year at the Extravaganza, really pretty fish. Here's another really interesting idea. This is a Jack Dempsey. Uh, this was a nice looking fish. This was from the Aquatic Experience ACA competition in 2019. Uh, these are certainly wonderful fish where you could potentially keep a group. The jaguar and the Cuban cichlids, they look very similar. They may be options as well, but again, anytime we're dealing with these semi-aggressive to moderately aggressive South and Central American fish, we're gonna wanna be very careful about how we stock them. Oscars are always an option. We have had a 125 where we had three Oscars. We are down to one, unfortunately, but they got along well. For some of these fish, it might work out a little bit better. Here's our 125 when the Oscars were a little bit smaller and our tilapia was a lot smaller. But often with these South and Central Americans, you may have better luck when you're keeping multiples if they grow up together from fry. But please understand when they get to breeding size, you may still wind up having problems. The issue that we're going to have with a 125, and especially with fish like this, Midas cichlids, red devils, these more aggressive fish is sometimes they would just prefer to be on their own. And a 125, often what we'd wanna do with these fish is try to overstock the tank, and a 125 might not be large enough to overstock relatively large, aggressive cent Central and South American cichlids. And you can see here, this Midas cichlid has fry. Once that happens, all bets are off. Even in a 125, they're gonna push everybody to one side of the tank and it could be a problem. Here's another example of a flower horn where a fish like this might be better off kept on its own. 
I often get questions, what can you keep with a flower horn? And my answer is always the same. They're better off by themselves, even in a larger tank. It's just not worth the risk. The other thing that you can do is kind of switch over to the African cichlids. This is an Mbuna community tank that might be really cool. There are so many different types and we don't have time to go over them all. I'll put a video in the upper right hand corner that shows how we set up our Mbuna tanks. But this is an African cichlid from Lake Malawi that can be really, really cool in a 125 and give you a lot of color. Now this happened to be from the aquatic experience in 2019, one of the display tanks where they just had a couple different species, but they can be very striking. This is a peacock tank. So instead of Mbunas, we're dealing with Lake Malawi cichlids that are peacocks. You can mix peacocks and haps together. This is a 125, works out nice, an all male tank. Once you start adding in the females, sometimes you're going to get a little bit more aggression because now we've got males that want to breed with them and that just creates aggression. But you can see here, this is a pretty nice looking tank. We have done male peacock tanks. We've even done mixed peacock tanks in tanks that are smaller than a 125. But this is probably going to give you the best chance for success when you have a six foot tank or larger with male peacocks and you can see the colors. There are so many varieties and I don't necessarily have names for all the different peacock fish that you're going to see, peacock cichlids that you're going to see in this video. But the point is, if you're looking for stocking ideas, you start researching, wow, you know, it'd, be probably, it'd probably be pretty cool to have a peacock tank. And you start looking at the fish that fit your needs and that have the colors you want. And it can be really rewarding. This happens to be some of our star sapphire cichlids. We did a species profile on them. Again, I'll put that in the description below as of the making of this video these were actually in a 40 gallon breeder they need to be moved to at least a 75 but you put these in a 125 and you're going to have a really really striking fish point is the peacocks are awesome lots of color a 125 would be the ideal setup for an all-male tank another option you may have in a 125 are some of the more predatory haps that are in Lake Malawi. These are usually very beautiful fish, as you can see here, but they can get a little bit longer. They're gonna definitely eat smaller fish. They will definitely show their aggression at times, but they, they are absolutely awesome, and it's just another option. Some of the fish I really enjoy are these feather fins. There are many different types, and I don't have time to show you them all, but the Athamal tilapia, just generally speaking, are absolutely gorgeous fish from Lake Tanganyika. They don't get super huge, but they do, they're pretty active, and they do need a decent amount of swimming space, and so that's why I think a six-foot tank can be a really sweet option for them. Can you keep them in a four-foot tank? Sure. But some of the larger ones would do best if you had them in a nice, healthy four foot lake tangan you can set up as long as you're really good about your water parameters these are fish that can last a very long time and once again when we're looking at these fish understand the fish that i've presented so far they have very different water parameter requirements different temperatures potentially different diets so we cannot necessarily mix these fish together we really want to make sure that we're settling on a type of fish and a type of environment and then you can go from there and figure out how you want to stock it so let's talk a little bit about the types of fish that you could have for a cleanup crew this is a really good option this is syncrosis birdmorii it is a type of loach that will get somewhere around six inches or so that's about the size of the one that you're looking at here that happens to be in one of our 75 gallon tanks but this is a great fish that would fit in pretty well with some of your less aggressive South and Central American cichlids. We've had them in with Severums and Geophagus and they worked out well together. You can also see that there is a red tail shark in this tank and red tail sharks can be fairly aggressive and this fish I would say is slightly more aggressive than the red tail shark at least in terms of not being bullied by that shark. So it's fit in well with this particular tank and it could be a really good option as a single fish in a 125 without mixing multiples together. Red tail sharks are a potential option depending on the inhabitants of your tank. If you're in that semi-aggressive realm, I almost never recommend red tail sharks for anything less than a six foot tank because they can get quite aggressive. The Cynodonis cats might be a really good option as a cleanup crew, especially if you are dealing with African cichlids. This might be something to consider. The other thing is a lot of the rare plecos. We did a fish room tour of freshwater exotics. That's where these pictures and images are coming from. 
and there are so many different types of rare plecos. Some of them get larger. So if you're dealing with a pleco that's gonna be eight, nine, 10, 12 inches, it'd be nice to have a larger tank for them. If there's a downside to some of these plecos, it might be that they hide a little bit from time to time. And so maybe you, you buy one of these plecos and you don't see it all the time, but it's still pretty cool when you've got these really pretty fish that can get to be eight to 12 inches and you've got this proper space for them. Understand that plecos like to eat and sometimes they'll make a little bit of a mess, but when you have a 125 gallon tank, that's not as big of an issue. It's a little bit easier to manage the water parameters. So when it comes to cleanup crew, there are so many options for 125, whether we're dealing with the Synodonis cats or the red tail sharks or some of the larger types of loaches or even some of these more exotic plecos, lots of really cool options. Now, what I'd like to do just as uh, kind of a, a wrap up is I wanna talk about a few fish that may not be the best option if you've got a 125, because this is, let's face it, this is a six foot tank and a lot of people are like, wow, this is gonna be awesome. I've got this massive tank, I can do whatever I want. And often I hear people ask about certain fish. So for instance, peacock bass, completely out. For 125, they get massive. Check out this 16,000 gallon tank. These are huge fish that might get to be two feet in length. Not a good option. Arowana, a very poor choice for a 125. They just get far too large for a small six foot tank. Tinfoil barbs and ballast sharks. This is in a 150, this, this is my tank. Th these fish I absolutely regret buying because of the size of the tank. Some of the tilapia get a little bit larger. That can be a bad option. Dovi, that can be huge, are not necessarily a great option. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful and if you did, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.